Every living thing needs water for its survival. Grasses, trees, animals all need water to survive. The human beings need water all the time for them to survive. Water makes 78% of the human body. Water is important in the world. Where there is no water, there is a problem. Where there is no water, there is a desert. Water can be drawn from different sources. Springs, dams, rivers, lakes, ocean, and rain. Man will always harvest water from these sources. But the most important thing is the quality of water. Must be good for human consumption. It must be treated, boiled or filtered. The biggest problem today results from untreated water, especially in urban areas. Underground water too is harmful to humans. Uganda is one of Africa's richest water sources. The second biggest lake in the world is Lake Victoria in Uganda. The longest river in the world, River Nile, starts from Uganda. There are also many other lakes in Uganda. Uganda lies along the equator covered by tropical forests. But the north and east of Uganda have a problem of water in some parts, making household sanitation a problem. She wants, she wants the project to continue. But what she wants is just some assistance from us. <laughs> she... Education is important to the families. This is what Minister of Water and Environment, supported by Global Environment uh, Facility project, through the uh, African Development Bank, is doing in these areas. As part of a bigger component, of a bigger project, to, to climate proof the investments, yeah, uh, um, implemented under what we call the Water Supply and Sanitation Program One, funded by the African Development Bank. So that program ran, we had a lot of investment done under it in the Elgon region, we had gravity flow schemes, we had, we had several, several towns implemented under that. In larger communities, so we received additional there is funding need for from the water to address the problem of sanitation. Uh, through the African Development Bank to provide money to increase resilience of that investment to the effects of climate change. That is policy and program on sanitation. Solutions are needed in these areas. Ministry of Water and Environment is Our building museums in areas in that districts. commonly experience flooding. Three in the Teso region and three in the Wokedi region. Uh, the major characteristic of those districts is that they're all flood prone. They experience flooding and these districts include uh, Sorati, Kumi, Ukedea, Butaleja, Budaka and Palisa. Yeah, so those districts are usually severely affected by flooding and uh, when flooding occurs along with destroying other systems toilet facilities are usually destroyed along and the trouble with that is that when oceans are washed away, uh, the water, the flood water carries along the excreta, which ends up contaminating the environment, contaminating the water sources, and really causing a health hazard to, to everybody in the area, both in, in the place where the flood has happened, but also downstream where the water ends up. That's why we see that when such events happen, for example, in the hills, you get the effect in the low-lying areas. The sanitation program involves construction of latrines in these areas to control disease spread whenever it floods. 122 sanitation facilities have been constructed for schools, while 11 were constructed for communities living in peri-urban areas. Because they know you have floods. 
In schools, the ministry constructed three types of latrines, lined VIP latrines, cesspit, and enviroloo, both for boys and girls. For communities, public enviroloo, lined VIP latrines, and cesspit have been constructed. We were tasked to come up with designs of toilet facilities with the biggest criteria being they should be resilient to effects of flooding. So that was the biggest criteria that we had now. That could be achieved um, by existing technologies, but we had to work around the technologies to increase their resilience to flooding. So if you have a technology like a VIP and you want to improve its resilience to climate change, you can work around it to increase its strength by, for example, lining it and building it up with columns and beams in the underground chamber so that you're able to increase its ability to withstand flooding. Sorry. The ministry has also trained schools which have formed sanitation clubs. Now as people, we need to look at the activities which we need to carry out to make sure our environment is clean. What are some of these activities that we, we, we should do to make sure our environment is clean? Personal hygiene is the general cleanliness of our bodies. From that training, at least there is great change, whereby pupils themselves were sensitized and they can now know that uh, sanitation should be maintained in the school and also themselves, they are supposed to keep themselves clean. Previously the situation was uh, not all good as such, but uh, after the training, we have now learned what to do. I organize pupils during, during the health parade. We talk about the health of the pupils and how to maintain sanitation in our school. I tell children to sweep the compound and to and I tell them about sanitation to sweep the to sweep the classrooms, to wash their uniforms, and I tell and I tell them to wash the latrine. We did. It had instructed the school to mobilize P3 to P6 children, eight of them, the head boy or the head girl. Then the health prefects and special needs as for the senior man teacher and senior woman. Then the teacher in charge of sanitation was one and chairperson school management committee. Okay, after the training, we are to make a, 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 the action plan for the activities. By the concerned people, to say, that's why we wrote here by whom, and then the time frame at the period at which these activities were to be carried out. The first thing we catered for was to look at the open defecation 
just within the compound and also around the villages which were surrounding the school. So here, we, the solution for that was to add more latrine stanzas to the school because at the first we had only 10 against this enrollment of 1,040 people. Communities too have also been trained to manage sanitation facilities and have formed health clubs. The challenges of uh, toilets, uh, plate stands, and general hygiene in the community. But however, with the enforcement of the council from, I mean, committee from district, we have fought hard together, and it, the conditions have improved. Most households have have toilets have uh, so plate stands and uh, rubbish pits. Those who sleep in are around 1,800 to 2,000. But during the daytime, we are roughly 3,000 and above. Because they come in all from neighboring villages to come here and do their business. Under this component, also, local masons have been trained taking into account the gender perspective. The purpose is to ensure maintenance of sanitation facilities when the contractors have left. I've learned many things. The way of the ways of starting the how to start the building, building the holes, and when our farmer is measuring, is together with us when we are setting. We are total of fifteen across four districts, but in Palsa districts we are five. So far I've been receiving trainings on different parts of work also. I was trained in building, whereby I'm on sites, such as I've been building in Aquamor primary school, and other sites have been, uh, have been moving and uh, excavating them, whereby I know that I will continue doing the same work of building. I'm most happy that I've learned a lot of works in this company. Whereby the experience that I had not got, I'm getting this company because such toilets have not been around in the community. We had a component of training Mazons. We were supposed to train 30 Mazons, five per district. We identified these Mazons. We, we took them through the theoretical training and then we attached them to the contractor. Yeah, so they were able to work with the contractor and, and achieve this this uh, this knowledge. We wanted to make sure that they have handle a bit of all the technologies so that they have a comprehensive kind of knowledge. So that happened. We thought we'd have a balance between the male and the female. Unfortunately, we're not able to get very many females. We got only two. The overall purpose of the sanitation program is to ensure school and community health. Larger communities like towns will always need highly treated quality water. In towns of the north, they get their water from larger water sources like lakes, rivers. The water must be treated for the population that live in towns. That's why there are water works in these regions under the Ministry of Water to supply clean water. In the entire phase one and phase two is 20 billion shillings. We are concerned that we must make sure that this water supply is sustained. The fullest sustainability is built in the whole entire program, uh, program aspects. For Bududa Navgaya water supply, we have already appointed umbrella organization as a manager so we are going to hire a private operator for this water supply and this private operator will be reporting to Umbrella Organization. So Umbrella Organization will ensure that this private operator collects revenue, he can account for the revenue, he can make sure that um, all small, small things uh, which can be collapsed are put right and ensure that it is also expanded beyond the current water supply area that, is, uh, that we are going to, go to hand over at this way. In towns, there are working populations. There are hospitals where the sick are treated. Therefore, clean water is important. This is... The topography of Uganda is horseshoe-like, which determines the water catchment areas. In the center is the River Nile. To the west 
is the Renzori mountain ranges. To the south are undulating hills and to the east is Mount Elgon ranges. Below Mount Elgon is a dry belt that needs water for the households. Annette Mutenyo is a housewife, resident of Bulori Ward A in Bududa Town Council. She fetches water from a stream one kilometer uphill. This is a common practice for households in the Mount Elgon area. <laughs> Ministry of Water and Environment is addressing the water shortage through the water for consumption in the area. It is supported by the Global Environment Facility through the African Development Bank. The second phase of the gravity water flow scheme starts from inside Mount Elgon Forest Park and extends to water constrained in a way hill. The residents here use to walk distances for water at the foothills of Nawe. We really left. We, we really thank you for the work and we would like to press this on for God and my country. It's running. Nancy, you can hear. Water supply has reached the sub-counties of Bushi, Bulusheke, Bochigai, Bududa Hospital, Bududa Town Council and Bushiribo. We managed to get water flowing through the treatment plant from the intake in the, in the forest into the treatment plant which has been well laid out and uh, transmission to the different reservoirs and connections to the people, including the problematic of Nabuya Hill. Nabuya Hill is this hill which is in the middle of Luda Town Council, where water would not reach by gravity. So we managed to extend a twist and uh, to do a pumping station. Under phase two, we have works which include pumping using electricity, and it will include an extending power to Buruwande, from the lower levels of the mountains where electricity is and we just go up to to Rwanda and pump water to the top of the hill. So that one is work work is not done but it's going to come up. What we did the the tariff or the cost of water is uniform. So even if there are these parts which who are just getting water by gravity, the cost of water includes some component of pumping to people Above, above that level of Buru and the tank to the top of the hill. And uh, that one has been, uh, we pump, we've been pumping so that they also get water as those ones who are in the other parts of the supply area. So the cost of water, which is uniformed for each and every person in this supply area, is taking advantage of the no cost of power in the treatment plant and only add a small component of pumping for a few people who are on top of Nabia Hill. So, residents can access reliable piped water through water taps at home and tap stands. This project is about uh, providing service to the people. So when you get water reaching the tap, reaching the house, reaching the kitchen, you have achieved the objective. There are many things in between, but the most important thing that is in the taste of the pudding is in the eating. Today we have water reaching homes. As we talk now, water is reaching Naboya, and the people of Naboya are getting connections. What happened was that uh, the gravity scheme provides water only up to Buluande. It is from Buluande that water is pumped up to Naboya Hill.
And from Naboya Hill, the people who live in the upper reaches of Naboya Hill then get water. So there is nobody within the intended project area who is not near to a water supply. When the hardware uh, contractor has uh, harvested the, the water, it's our role to engage the community, uh, move them from the point of not using that water, because I know Ududa has so many uh, different sources of water. But government found it very important because some parts of Bududa where water are constrained, especially uh, the communities around Nabwea. Household of Upper Nabwea who did not benefit from the piped gravity water flow received 290 rainwater harvesting tanks. Water would manage to get water flowing through the treatment plant from the intake in the, uh, in the forest into the treatment plant, which has been well laid out, and uh, transmission to the different reservoirs and connections to the people, including the problematic Nabuya Hill. Nabuya Hill is this hill which is in the middle of Ruda Town Council, where water would not reach by gravity. So we managed to extend electricity and uh, to do a pumping station along at the at a certain level of the hill, and we are pumping water to the top of the mountain. And uh, really now everything is uh, well, as per the plan, and people are getting water. Where we are standing now, served by this tank that we are supplying in 100 cubic meters, where we are standing now. Then where we were before, that's called Bulovi, mm. the far most, the northern part. It's unfortunate some of you didn't reach there. It is a 50 cubic meter tank that is also supplying that supply area. Then the third area is the up the hill Nabwea supply area. So basically that is the scope of the, uh, the, the works as regards this project phase two. As per now, we can tentatively and confidently say the contractors completed roughly around 90% of the work. There are some small snags here, but what is left basically are the extra connections that because of what has been going on now. Because when they saw, we had the problem with phase one, but when the locals started seeing water within these tanks, they were confident enough that uh, at least for now, we are sure that there will be water. And so they hurriedly, as I say, they hurriedly started now paying up. Good enough also with the coming of a software consult and KI, they also at least managed to at least speed up at least the, at least the community mobilization and at least explaining to the, the populations the, the good of the project. And that is also what at least helped at least in, enlighten the locals of the good of the project and the, at least has moved us a step further. Formally, gravity water flow reached Bududa Hospital when it was opened as a referral. In the hospital, Water is very important for drinking, washing, cooking. Doctors, cleaners and patients need water. It is important for their health and sanitation. Of course, this world needs water 24 hours. Okay. And we deal with the blood. And you know with the world, we have so many things which can, in fact, we can get rid of many infections with, with only water and soap. But in the event that there is no water, we, fail, we, we get a lot of challenges. Like even in hand washing. We are supposed to do hand washing whenever we are going to perform any... any we are going to touch a patient and even after. But sometimes we fail to wash our hands. Because there is no water. We've been having challenges uh, to do with 
a water supply in the hospital for several years. At first we had a scheme uh, that uh, used to supply us. Before we used to have water that is just pumped from the rivers. We have river manaf and whatever. Uh, uh, we had a water station uh, down there, mm -hmm. just near the corner there as we moved down. Mm -hmm. But uh, it broke down. <laughs> so far, the water plan covers several households in Bloli A and B ward, the town council and Nabwea Hill. Distant homes from the gravity flow water supply scheme benefit under the rainwater harvesting system. In areas of north and northeastern Uganda, there is a problem of water. Families need water for consumption. In Katakwe district, government of Uganda has funded the distribution of 250 rainwater harvesting tanks for domestic consumption for every beneficiary sub-county. Of the beneficiaries have semi-permanent structures, others have permanent structures, and. Uh, we, we, we felt or we thought that it would be good to give the plastic tanks to the beneficiaries with semi-permanent structures because in future they, they might want to, to construct a, a permanent structure. They should be able to transfer that plastic tank to the new, new house or structure that they will put up. The consultant who initially did the design, the assessment, and he worked with the district local government to identify the priority need areas. Like an example I can give is Kataku district. They chose the northwestern district that borders with the, I think, Padero near the Kitugum because uh, the boreholes don't get enough water and it's a dry zone. So. Since other water technologies had failed, the district prioritized that. So most of the facilities were supposed to be put there. But eventually, I think the two neighboring sub-counties were also supplied. So the consultant worked with the district officials, the technical people, to identify those need areas. They carried out sensitization programs. And uh, because we had requirements, we don't just give water. The rainwater harvesting tank beneficiaries are already using the water. They have also set up vegetable gardens. We always get water from Aujabule Primary School. From here up to Aujabule, oh, it is one kilometer. can go like three times a day. Those are six jerry cans. Of course, we are not comfortable. From here up to there, it is a long distance. For me, on my side, as I see women going to the well, on my side, I'm... I'm pregnant, and on top of that, someone who is pregnant, or like me, it is not very easy to do what, ride a bicycle. So, as the tank is near, it will be helping me also on one side. From me up to there, it's not a long distance. You go and fish, you come and wash your plates, go and fish, you do other work, you cook, while doing other things also. Before this uh, harvesting water tank, they used to go down there with a small well where they collect water. But now, since they have got it, there is no way for them to disturb themselves to go and fetch water. They fetch within this tank. In Apache district, Chawente, Ibuje, and Akokoro sub counties are in the rain shadow. These areas are water constrained. These rainwater harvesting tanks have been distributed in four critical sub-counties of Ibuje, Chawente, Nambieso, Akokoro. The communities living in these areas face a water problem despite being near Lake Kwania. Drilling a borehole takes over 60 meters or even 120 meters and even get a dry well. Government has supplied 250 rainwater harvesting tanks for households. The intervention has reduced the distance covered to fetch water. So we face a lot of challenges. One is 
when you go to the bowl, you get many, you got a lot of people at the bowl. Then then come, then come. Do what? For us here, we have problem. We, because we have only one bowl at the school, where most of the people around here, they collect water from the bowl. And she's very happy, her life is easy because every time she goes to the garden, whenever she comes back, the water is just readily available for you. Here they come, the cement blocks. So our life is very, very okay, very easy now. Because even if she comes back, the water is readily available, she can just pick 10 liters. Mm. She doesn't have to go now. Under all these contracts, we have trained 10 local masons in the art of making rain, rain, ferro cement tanks. In each district, we have trained two women groups so that they are able to, to work through their circles and contribute a little, and they have the skill now on doing this. And uh, we are happy because as we progressed through the contracts, the first masons who are trained were in fact getting work and in a patch they are already providing the service to private people. We are grateful to ADB and the Global Environment Facility for availing to government these resources to do this. But we, uh, we blended in it a capacity development program. Under all these contracts, we have trained 10 local masons in the art of making rain, rain ferro cement tanks. In each district we have trained two women groups so that they are able to, to work through their circles and contribute a little and they have the skill now on doing this. In production, water is important. Farmers need water for their animals. They also need water for their crops. Generally, Uganda has rain-fed production. The rural people need water for production. Nothing grows without water. But most districts in Uganda like Nakasongola, Nakaseke, Rakai, Isinjiro, Apach, Otuke, Katakwi and districts in Karamoja sub-region are drought prone. Where there is no rain, dams must be constructed to provide water. Government is implementing water for productions in three drought-prone districts of Katakui in Teso sub-region, Apache and Otuke in Lao sub-region. Each of the districts has identified three water-stressed sub-counties to construct 10,000 cubic meter valley tanks. We entered this, we identified these projects. They were there was high demand for water for production, livestock, watering, and both uh, domestic uh, water needs were also noted during our feasibility studies. So we came in to fill in that gap, providing water for the livestock farmers and also the herdsmen who look after the, the livestock. Uh, as I talk now, most of the facilities are, have water, so that means we are already harvesting water for livestock and also two of the three lots we have been able to complete the drilling of boreholes for the domestic uh, for domestic water use for the communities around the facilities and also the people who look after the livestock when they come they bring their livestock to water at the, the watering points they can also take back a jerry can of safe and clean water for home use Every valley tank has an animal drinking area for cattle, sheep and goats, a sanitation facility, a powerhouse and a community borehole. Tanks, uh, they contain uh, mostly the civil part, which is uh, supported by the earthworks. As you can see, well, it's, uh, we, we excavate 
then uh, water comes in uh, through these uh, floods and uh, through the catchment area. Then after we pump water from the tank, from the valley tank, up to the, the tanks which supply the water by gravity to the traps, then to the public stand post. Since the water is not treated, we always also provide a borehole uh, for the case of uh, water for drinking or domestic water. Then I uh, also provide a toilet where we provide a fence to enclose the whole system because uh, the sources of water are outside the fence, so nobody is supposed to enter inside or cows. They all receive the water outside the fence and the people also receive the water outside the fence. I uh, also provide a tank stand. Uh, which helps in uh, because the water flows by gravity from the tanks to these structures, the cattle troughs, then the public stand post. So we try to raise the tanks more higher than the levels of the troughs and the public stand post. Uh, Katakui district has three valley tanks. In Ongongoja sub county, a valley tank has been constructed at Aomoy and at Oriau in Maguro sub county. Uh, as a district, we have established a water user committee for the valley tank. Uh, trainings have been conducted on the roles and responsibility of the committee. Uh, then, uh, of recent, uh, we had a training for three days, organized by Appropriate Technology Center, uh, a, a branch from the Ministry of Water and Environment, we had a meeting and a training on how to come up with the bylaw that is going to be used to manage water for production and rainwater harvesting. Another completed valley tank is also done in Katakui sub-county. All installations are complete, with the tank installations of 8,000 cubic liters each. So this is the dam of uh, Osudani, Katakui Osudani. We have so far done inlet, outlet, chain link, tanker stand, toilet, and domestic dam. It's over done. Now even uh, the these cutter troughs, they are also we are about to, to, to finish them. Yeah, when you like put a percentage, how much work has so far been done and how much is remaining? Mm, we have so far done almost 90%. For Apache district, there is a construction of a Paramo Valley Tank in Akokoro sub-county, Odakowang Valley Tank in Ibuji sub-county, and a Jar Valley Tank in Chawente sub-county. All the sub-counties are in the rain shadow despite being near Lake Kuania. Under the Water Supply and Sanitation Program, Uganda National Adaptation Program of Action, the site at Aja, Aja Valley Tank work has started with residents having expectations to offset their ambitions. We used to fetch it from the, 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 the temporary dump there and the, there's also a boy all there. Mm. But it's not enough for us, we are very many. Huh? We use for animals, um, drinking, bathing and so many things, even for, 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 for agriculture, we also use it for irrigation, small one. Yeah. Making this, digging, digging this tomato, and so other things, small like light cabbages. Is, is we want this one to get finished so that at least we get what? A very good dam here, but totally right now we don't have even a dam because the work has not yet completed. It's almost becoming one year. We are waiting for the water, but the, the work has not yet completed. Yet even we have only one bar hole from here. And then it can, it, it can contain like a hundred people. I work with people, but Eh, government of the United to do again a piatu, Nahajan, Port Portnell, P. Maramu to his body. Cowery P. Car cannot wear on no P. No Balaka, Pian Pino knock your duong, no John no point P. The mayor P. Balotica, a Pasha P. and no Balasha dog P. A visible beautiful and Mazuano. I want to tell you now, Mazza Gamala. I want to live on in Amaz Matono. Nai konte nai konte ne tu aliba sanyo funyo kulaba nti damu ene tu jira walo ne tu genzo kulaba nge damu te kola chi te gua katichito mazemo sanyo 
kwafe kati twebuza anti damu batu limba bulimbi kuleta wone damu etegwe buli joba leta bantu tugeta kulu bulwazi bulwazi tulemye we are now constructing uh, a jar hmm? a jar very soon it will be be, be, be in place hmm? so after that now the uh, uh, agricultural team must come the production department we have uh, um, Oparmo in a villa. Huh? These are very critical areas where if now they utilize these facilities well, I think they can boost our food security, they can provide us food, they can be our food basket in a patch. Three other valley tanks of 10,000 cubic liters capacity have been constructed in Otoke district in the sub-counties of Adwari, Okwang and Ogor. Civil works have delayed due to a harsh weather and flooding affecting dam excavation. We have already accepted all everything to give our development in our place. So we want water, we are very happy. We are happy for this water. The way they were working, okay, the work, the work started, actually they, it, it started uh, very well, but uh, I'm seeing some delays. The world today represents a new climate condition. There is little rain across the world, therefore a problem of water. Crop and animal production is disturbed because of lack of water and absence of rain. For the change in climate, the reasons are many. Biomass destruction for urban construction, cutting of trees for charcoal, population growth, encroachment on water catchment areas, brick making, industrialization, mining and unplanned agriculture. Poor waste management practices all expose the soil to erosion, landslides, flooding and consequently crop failure. The degraded environment must be restored as quickly as possible. Rivers and lakes must be allowed to flow. This is the work of man in earth. Uh, the major target of this um, output was uh, to protect the catchment areas for these rivers, both within the national park and outside the national park. The second output was um, protection of uh, river banks uh, for the rivers supplying water for these uh, for the infrastructure for um, these gravity cross schemes. And um, under this, we were supposed to um, rehabilitate uh, 400 hectares of degraded uh, river and uh, stream banks. There is also another component under the climate proofing investment on tree planting river bank restoration and good farm practices in Namisindwa, Bukwo and Bududa districts. I used that uh, they put the, 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 the bands or the soil control structures, the run of control structures across the slope. And uh, we were impressed that actually they've done it. We found that they found us when they don't have knowledge of doing these things, but when they came and taught us, at least we have improved. Um, land use, technologies, all practices that aim at increasing uh, land productivity, um, minimizing the effect of uh, climate change through um, acting as uh, increasing its, its capacity to absorb or sequestrate carbon dioxide, and uh, the major activities that we're promoting under this were agroforestry, then um, soil and water conservation and, and soil and water conservation um, structures. Bukwo district in Sebei region is located northeast of Mount Elgon just along Mount Elgon Forest Reserve. Government is building resilience to climate change for communities living within Mount Elgon region. 
the communities are practicing agroforestry, irrigation, and have replenished the degraded river banks. They received tree seedlings. Siwa Martin lives at the periphery of Mount Elgon National Park. On a two-acre piece of land, he has grown coffee, citrus fruits, bananas, and napier grass along the bands. He also has Irish potatoes and owns a cow. Uh, first of all, uh, the, the, the trees planted has actually controlled soil erosion, and even the fruit trees, the children actually benefits from nutrition. Uh, the, 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 the children no longer actually suffer from other diseases associated with nutrition because of the fruits that he actually has from the garden. He also sells uh, these seedlings, uh, the, the, the fruits, and he gets money to pay his children a school fees. These trees, when they will mature, because first of all it benefits from uh, the soil conservation, the, 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 the roots of these trees have actually stabilized the soils and the, the process it actually controls soil erosion. He is chairperson of Sukwo Beekeeping Association, where the group have an understanding with the Uganda Wildlife Authority to practice apiary in Mount Elgon Forest Reserve. They own 55 beehives. So Angela, Ranga day day, Kaga sta jeka rome. Ago, ke bonde mengo shi. Ke bonde mengo shi. And all of them are cited in the park. They have the MOU with the Uganda Wildlife Authority. They have the five is the Kenya Tupa hives, the modern ones. The Nyoru, the Nyoru chilme. The Nyoru weshi ande millioni. Uh, they got one million shillings from the sale of honey, and this money was actually given to the members of that group because of because they want every, every member was actually requesting to pay the fees for their children. So we distributed to all the members. Anger la gadi kje kje gona ille kje yemda jeri betanga ge. Emily Musa lives at Magunga Village in Cortex Sub County. She received four hundred three seedlings. The trees act as stakers on her farm where she grows passion fruit. These trees has really helped her right from the beginning because she, previously she, she, had already, she had already planted some also. And the, she has realized the impact that the soil, soil erosion that has been a serious problem uh, following this terrain, uh, the, the nature of this land uh, is now controlled. She has also planted uh, napier grass along the, the, the terracing and the fertility has actually increased as a result of what planting of these trees. She grows napier grass along the hedges of the terraces. She has dug the trenches, she has planted uh, napier grass along the trenches and these, uh, fat gra uh, these grasses uh, is helping her a lot to feed her animals, uh, she also gets the cow dung for uh, soil fertility. But there is one lead farmer who has established an example of good agronomy practices. Muneria Thomas owns eight acres of land. He has intercropped coffee with prunus and cod africana. He also grows gulveria, pinus patula, and other fruit trees. Interplanted napier grass with pinus patula. He has also planted napier grass at the terrace edges. Uh, I was supplied with uh, 1,200 seedlings this year. Uh, so I managed to, to plant them. Uh, along the river banks, I've planted the trees uh, and then uh, napier grass along the, along the river banks. Five acres of his land is covered with the trees. He received 1,200 tree seedlings of pine, 200 prunus africana. He has also bought 1,200 tree seedlings. But this year we supplied the trees slightly early. That was March and that was the beginning of the rains. So we are sure that the trees are fine. As we've seen some of them, the trees are okay. They are well protected because they had enough rain. The tree species that we've planted, there is ficus which is also good for the river banks. We've also supplied bamboo. We've also supplied fruit trees because the farmers really are emphasizing that they want fruit trees to also benefit by selling and also eating. 
and uh, we also supplied uh, Kodi Africana which is a good uh, shade tree for the coffee trees that we have and the farmers have appreciated and there is a, a bigger demand for trees now. I think the farmers have begun to realize the value of the trees. Muneria's land is located along River Kurtek where he has also tapped water for irrigation. He became a model farmer after he trained in agro-practice. Farming itself is uh, one of the projects that uh, earns us a lot. Uh, we get the uh, income out of it. Uh, we buy uh, out of the income. Uh, we spend now for paying school fees and so many things. We also, uh, after getting some money from farm, we use them also others to return to, to, to the farming again. The profit, you, you pay school fees, uh, others you use for other businesses. Under the forest restoration along catchment areas, Ministry of Water and Environment has constructed energy saving stops for 11 schools in Namisi Indua district. Under uh, institutions, we constructed 15 energy saving uh, stops and they are already in use. And we supported um, about for about 1,200 households with um, household energy cooking stoves. Me, I love to cook on that, the other ones, not Why? this ones, because these ones, they take a lot of fuel and also too much smoke. And that one, it takes a small what, fuel, and the, the smoke is not in too much. The only smoky kitchen now looks clean with no smoke. The cooks explain that the process of cooking has been simplified. The school has had a reduction of firewood used from 16 trips per term to four. Each trip costs 250,000 shillings. Our population is now 1,200 students and the, since the inception of these new stoves, uh, last time we used 18 trips, but previously they were using 16 trips. The reason why there was an increase is because the number all of students almost doubled. And uh, if we had remained on the other faster stops, the number, could, the number of trips could have been almost 32 or 35. But uh, with the new stops, much as the number of the students have increased, you will find that the increase in the trips of firewood supply has increased by only two. When we were constructing uh, energy cooking stoves, we made it a point to use uh, communities from around. So this means that even um, after project closure, the technology and the skills to construct energy cooking stoves are still within communities. With regards to um, the energy cooking stoves, um, the, the community or household cooking stoves, they have a lifespan of uh, about two years. So the major aim of using communities was to ensure that after every two years, there is somebody with skills to go on constructing uh, stoves uh, for these communities. And the idea is, once the communities test these stoves and find them uh, efficient, then they can always even invest their own money to construct uh, stoves once this, these ones get uh, spoiled. Have you captured? Agriculture has suffered poor land use management. In eastern districts of the country, 
poor land use has resulted into land degradation and landslides. And this was a special area of intervention targeting the districts of Bukwo, Bududa, and Namisindwa. Close to 2,000 people. Um, soil and water conservation or climate smart agriculture is broad and uh, it entails a number of um, um, land use technologies or practices that aim at increasing uh, land productivity, um, minimizing the effect of uh, climate change through um, acting as uh, increasing its, its capacity to absorb or sequestrate carbon dioxide. And uh, the major activities that we're promoting under this were agroforestry, then um, soil and water conservation and, and soil and water conservation um, structures. But of course, we also did a number of trainings on uh, how farmers can uh, improve land productivity. But majorly, the inputs that we were providing were based on uh, the two aspects. Which, which include agroforestry and uh, soil and water conservation. Um, we went to all the sub-counties, parishes, and the villages that uh, touch the national park and um, are closer to, to the rivers that we're trying to protect. And in this, we formed some groups which uh, we connected to Uganda Wildlife Authority, and we hope that even when we've left, these communities will keep working with uh, Uganda Wildlife Authority. But also, uh, um, we also brought uh, Uganda Wildlife in the picture. The Uganda Wildlife Authority has been implementing uh, some activities uh, that, that, that uh, relate to this component. Which, which, is, which are the activities that we are implementing um, within the National Park. And this has brought together both communities and Uganda Wildlife Authority, and we hope that uh, this will reduce... Will However, reduce in Namisindwa district, farmers have adopted best agricultural practices. Wabukata Sam Kiabi, resident of Sililwa village, Bukoko Sabu County, has participated in the restoration of Lasso degraded river bank, which flows along his 11-acre piece of land. It's not only this part, because there is another part that we gave an experiment in 10 years ago, where off there has got the soil properly and it is no longer moving. The tap roots are very strong enough to hold the soils. It cannot move away. Likewise, also this elephant grass, it acts also as also as breaks our soil, and we encourage it that actually when you are living at the banks, we need also to plant elephant grass. It acts also of the same species, and uh, not only that one, we have also these trees. Uh, these trees were given to us uh, because they use it as also as a, as a medicine for the hydro cell and uh, the like. Also, the asthmatic problem, the back of, the, of, of it, it is also useful to us locally. He has planted 10,000 tree seedlings, 600 of gluveria, 1,855 bamboo, 4,062 prunus africana, 350 cod africana in the sub-county. He has planted fruit trees, oranges, mangoes, avocado, and jackfruit. He also has an apiary. River action has destroyed river banks, both upslope and downslope. Human activity along river banks and sweeping waters result into flooding. Under the restoration of river banks intervention, communities living along river banks have received bamboo shoots and other tree species to plant along the river banks. But land ownership hinders the process. So the communities own this arrangement. As I talk right away now, the trees that I was given, uh, I believe that uh, they are doing well. And of course, with the effort of, uh, of management, we are trying to promote bamboo. 
Bamboo is put to so many uses within the region. We were trying as much as, it, as possible to promote indigenous trees. Indigenous trees that grow very well um, with crops. So farmers can have uh, trees, but at the same time, from the same piece of land, they should be able to access um, agricultural land. Man on earth has a big problem. And that problem comes from himself. He must do something to adapt to the world he or she lives. Government interventions will restore the hope to address climate change.